All right. So most likely, doesn't matter whether you've done your upper body or your lower body, you might have done either an ab specific exercise, maybe a crunch, maybe an extension, but you've more, most likely engaged your core and you've engaged your back. You gotta stretch that, guys, okay? You're mostly gonna be sitting around during the day and having a stiff back, stiff back is gonna hinder your mobility and you're gonna age a lot faster and no one wants that, right? No one wants that person that's reaching for something and that just gets stuck there and is bedridden for months. So you really gotta stretch that back. And I'm gonna give you a few different levels of stretches for the back in different ways. Now, one thing that I want you to be mindful of and before you even dare to stretch your back is consult with your physician. If you have a bulging disc, if you have a herniated disc, if you have any condition in your back that doesn't allow you to stretch a certain way, please don't do it. I'm going to give you a gamut of exercises and stretches that you can do if you're able to do all of them, but by all means if there's anything that you cannot do, please just listen to your doctor and skip that part, okay? For people who have herniated discs and bulging discs, this stretch usually, depending on where that hernia is, usually this type of stretch is helpful because in most cases, the hernia is at the front of the spine, i.e. towards the core, and that's where the pressure is created. So the exercise or the stretch that I'm gonna show you right now usually is okay for people that have that type of problem or if you've just done 100 crunches and you wanna stretch your abs, this is a good start. I'm going to start by lying on your tummy all the way down. And you're going to start thinking about lifting up uh, like you, if you were doing a Superman um, exercise. And the reason I say that is because this isn't just about lifting up and just holding it. This is also about engaging your core and your back muscles to stretch in that position. I know it seems counterintuitive, but you have to engage your back to stretch it too. Obviously, the very first level is just here, like a sphinx. So thinking about having your elbows right underneath your shoulders, both under in this sense, but also in this sense. The wider you have them, the lower you're gonna be, and it's not gonna be as beneficial. So you want them to at least be right underneath your shoulders. And in this position, I want you to engage your upper back muscles to think about curling back. So if you were to almost wanting to look at the ceiling and you start engaging your back to look up, you can actually see as my upper back starts dropping, that is really gonna stretch the front of your spine and it's really gonna be helpful if you have any form of tension in the front of your back. It is also gonna be helpful and this is where you might wanna stay if you have any low back tightness, depending on how severe that tightness is in your psoas and your lower back muscles, this might be where you stay and that's totally okay. This is already a deep enough stretch that can get you that motion that you want. Now one thing that I want you to be mindful of is if you're doing this stretch because you have lower back tension, don't engage your glutes. If you engage your glutes, you're gonna create even a deeper bend and it's gonna keep protecting your lower back. Yes, it's gonna hurt a little bit less, but that also means you're not stretching it because you're holding that tension. So that's gonna be counterproductive. Hold it for a few seconds. Don't hold it too, too long either because then you're not gonna be able to come out of it. But if this isn't enough and you're like, yeah, okay, this is fine. I've already engaged it. I could do more. In right where you are, just lift through the hands. Now, if you look at my shoulders, you can see that I'm not sagging at my shoulders. By sagging at your shoulders, you are not stretching your back. You're again just holding a position and doing nothing. You really want to be pushing down through the shoulders. And almost like if you were a zombie and you couldn't lift your legs up but you wanted to pull yourself through in between your hands, as you pull yourself through, you're going to start deepening that stretch. So again, take that stretch to wherever your limit is. Don't push yourself more than you need to. I'm just giving you different progressions so that you can achieve the level of stretch that you feel necessary for your body and your limitations. 
and you, if you really feel like you could do more, your lower back is feeling really good and you want a little bit more, your core is like, oh, this feels so good, I want more. You can bring it all the way down and start bringing the hands closer to your shoulders. The closer they are to your chest and your shoulders, the deeper the stretch is gonna be. So if I do it all the way here, this is gonna be a lot of a deeper stretch and it's gonna be focusing more on the very bottom of your low back, even closer to the hips. So again, be mindful of where your limitations are, what your flexibility level is, how tight your core is, but if this starts happening, then this is too much for you. Okay, you always want to be able to keep your hips on the mat, which means that if they're lifting up, then bring it down and get yourself humble, and maybe this is where you stay. Okay, but always keep your hips on the floor. And this is going to stretch the front side of your sp spine, the interior side of your body. And this is usually good for people that have um, disc issues on your back. But if you are doing a lot of leg presses, if you are doing a lot of uh, even regular squats, your QL muscles, which are two little muscles that go like that, either side of your low back are likely gonna be very, very tight. They're usually compensating for other weaknesses in your legs, so if you're not doing the exercise properly, those two muscles really get tight. And to really stretch them, I'm gonna go back to this stretch here that stretches your glutes, it's all also gonna help target your QL. But now I'm gonna invite you to start leaning to one side or the other. Now as you do that, if I'm gonna to lean towards my right, use your left hand and place it right at the crease of your opposite hip. That is gonna keep that hip rounded, which means that if your hip starts lifting up and doing this, your muscle is too tight, you're not doing anything for it. So keep it down, use this hand to keep it where it needs to be, and stretch sideways. You're gonna feel a really nice stretch down the side of your spine, and that is a really good QL stretch. The more you get into that flexibility, the more you get into that range of motion, you can start aiming shoulder to knee, or even deeper shoulder to floor. It depends on where you are. You can also reach over and above with that same arm, that is gonna help stretch your lat too, but that is not the focus of this exercise. For your QL, it's really just about that side bend. The more you open your chest is also gonna help open up your QL. So if you're facing the floor, you're not helping yourself, open that chest up to the side and always remember to do both sides. Ground that hip and stretch to the side. When I'm really tight, I like just staying here, propping up the elbow and just staying here, breathing for quite a little bit of time, and that really helps. If it's too tight, and even that feels a little bit painful, just sway it side to side, and that's gonna help move those muscle fibers against each other, and it will regain some of that mobility back onto your lower back. 